is going to be day two or Wednesday, May 13th, the second part of our mixed review for chapters 1 through 12. And we're going to do uh, problems 13 through 21 today. We're going to skip number 19. Um, and um, here we go. So first problem we have is factor completely if possible if the expression is not factorable right prime. Uh, we're not going to do that. We should be able to factor every single problem. Oh, sorry. It's not an equation. If it was an equation, we could do that. Um, since we have to factor them and it's an expression, so this is the important difference between an equation and expression. So we are going to factor it. So we're going to try, uh, right? What is our first thing? Is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Is it a binomial square or a difference of square? No, because my first and third in both of those have to be perfect squares. And that's not a perfect square and that's not a perfect square. So I know it's not a special case. So I'm going to go to A times C. So my A is 3, my C is negative 2. We get negative 6. Factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. The signs are different because that's negative. We know my signs are different. And the bigger is going to be positive. So the bigger of these two, 1 and 6, 6 is bigger. So 6 gets the positive, 1 gets the negative. 3 is bigger than 2, so 3 gets the positive, 2 gets the negative. And then I'm going to combine those. That makes 5, that makes 1. And which one is equal to my middle? My middle value is 1, and this value is equal to 1, so I'm going to use these two values to split up that middle value. So we're going to rewrite this trinomial into a polynomial, and we're going to use negative 2 and positive 3, and we're using this variable. This variable always goes for my middle, because if I combine this, that would still produce positive 1x. So I'm not changing the equation. I'm just rewriting it from three terms to four terms. Now we're going to group factor by grouping. We're going to group the first two. We're going to group the second two. So if I look here, I have an x in common. I look at the coefficients, 3 and negative 2. There's no common factor. I look at their variables, x squared and x, and I can take an x. So I can take an x out, and that leaves me with 3x minus 2. I love this, right? We're looking for common factors. This is a really good problem. So with this one, there is no common factor. So we still have to factor something out, and we know that every, every number has a common factor of 1. So one of the rare instances where we will factor out a, a positive 1, we see that and we know we did it correctly because the things inside the parentheses are the same. Since they're both multiplying, we're going to factor that out. And that leaves me with x plus 1. And my x plus 1 comes from this, x plus 1. And that would be my answer. That would be factored completely. I can't factor anything in the binomials. So my answer is going to be 3x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 1. That's the solution. Let's look at the next one. Again, I'm going to go through. Is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? No. 40 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to do a times c. So a is 1, c is negative 40. Factors of 40 are 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 3 no, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, 6 no, 7 no, and I'm around the horn because 8's already done. So my signs are different, and the bigger is going to be negative. So this time, the bigger number, the bigger of the two numbers is negative, and the smaller is going to be positive. Remember, these signs, this positive, 
this negative and this positive have to be different. So now I'm going to combine them. Negative 39, negative 18, negative 6, negative 3. And my middle is negative 5. So we notice that none of those are equal to negative 5. So none are equal to my middle. So at this point, we would do, we would say that this is prime. And the only reason we're saying prime and we're stopping is because it's an expression. We can't factor that. We can't do uh, completing the square. We can't do the quadratic formula because it's not an equation. So this is uh, earlier in the chapters where we're just factoring expressions. So that answer would be prime because none of those factors equal my middle term. Let's check this. Ooh, so automatically I see, and a little bell should go off in my head and go, oh, I like this. That's a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a binomial square. We got to test it. So is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Well, since it's three terms, three terms is always binomial squared. Two terms, two terms is always dead on the street. So since it's three terms, we're going to check for binomial square. Binomial square has four things. It has three terms, second sign positive. That's good. Is the first and third perfect squares? Yes. And then is the middle equal to two times the square root of the first times the square root of the third? So my middle is 24 and two times the square root of the first is square root of four and the square root of nine. So two times two times three, that gives me four times three. Does that equal 24? No, it doesn't. So all that means is it's not a binomial square. It doesn't mean that we can't keep going and factoring. So at this point, now we have to try a times c because it still might work for a times c. It's just not a binomial square. So 4 times 9 is 36. So we're going to look for factors of 36. 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5, no, 6, and 6. The signs are the same. When this is positive, we know the signs are the same. And they're both positive. So positive, 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 positive. That makes 37. That makes 20, 15, 13, 12. Do any of those equal my middle, 24? Nope. So again, ooh, this is going to be considered prime. These are good problems. These are definitely have to test your metal. Good. All right, let's take this. Again, I should be, ooh, both of those are perfect squares. Perfect squares. So is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Meaning, is it a binomial square? Three terms? Yes. Second sign positive? Yes. First and third perfect squares? Yes. Does 18 equal 2 times the square root of 1 times the square root of 6? 18, wow, we're getting some really bad ones. 2 times 1 times, not the square root of 6, uh, that's the square root of 36, which equals 6. 2 times 6. Does 18 equal 12? No. So not a binomial square. So again, we have to go to A times C. A being 1, C being 36. Factors of 36. 1 and 36. 2 and 18, 3 and um, 12, 
4 and 9, 6 and 6. Signs are the same and both are negative. Negative, 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 negative. We get negative 37, we get negative 20, negative 15, negative 13, negative 12. Again, this is prime. This is weird. It's interesting that we're getting so many primes. Don't think, don't think I'm doing it wrong. I'm quite certain I'm doing it correctly, but when you get prime prime, that sort of should uh, uh, raise some, some red flags. And again, when something doesn't seem right, go over your work. Stop, take your time, go over your work and make sure you're not making some major mistakes. 18 and 18 makes 36. That's correct. Um, right? 8 and 8 is 16. Yeah. Half of 36 is 18. So I'm doing it right. It's just very unusual that we get back-to-back -back prime answers. But, hey, at some point, we just got to trust our gut. All right, here we go. Um, so we have negative 48y squared plus 29y plus 15. We know it's not a perfect square, uh, a binomial square, uh, because those are not perfect squares. So first thing is um, standard form. Yes, it's in standard form. Common factor here is a tricky one. Common factor, we have to, because our first term is negative, we have to factor out a negative one. So this problem is actually gonna become 48y squared plus 29y, uh, sorry, minus 29y, we're factoring in the negative from all those equals that. I'm, I'm looking to see if there's a common factor also. Three. You would think three. Three goes into 48. Three goes into 15, but three doesn't go into 29. So uh, if we get another prime, I definitely know that there's a problem here. Uh, it's not a special case, so we're going to do A times C. Mr. Mac is very giddy right now. 48 times negative 15 is going to give me this enormous number. 48 times negative 15 gives me negative, negative 720. I'm going to find factors of 720. Holy moly. 1 and 720. 2 and 360. 3. 3 goes into 2, 4, 0, 4. 4 goes into it. 180. This is when Mr. Max should be taking your time and doing it properly to make sure you don't make a silly mistake. So you should you should definitely have a calculator in your hand. Uh, five, yes, five goes into 720 divided by five is 144. Six. We know six because it goes into two and three. So since it goes into two and three, six also goes into this number. Uh, and that might be 120 times 7, 2, divided by 6, 120. That's good. Trust every now and then. Uh, I say no on 7. Uh, 8. 8, yes, because I'm looking at this one. And if I take a 2 from here and push it over to there, that makes 8. So I would just divide that by 2, which is 90. That makes sense. And then yes, 9, because 9 and 80 because I make 9 times 8 is 72, 10 and 72, uh, 11, no, 12. 12, yes, because I'm looking at 6, and I could divide this by 2. So that's 12 and 60. Uh, 13, I'm going to guess, I'm going to gander no. 14, I'm going to say no, because 7 doesn't go into it. 14, 15. 15, no. Uh, eight, oh, yes, 15, yes, sorry. And I looked here because if I could divide this by 3 and push the 3 over there to make the 15, then divide this by 3. So 144 divided by 3. And I knew that went into 3 because 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9, so I knew 3 got, went into it. So 15 times 48, 16. 
I'm looking at 8. 8 and 8 is 16. Divide that makes 45. That's a horrible 45. 45, 16, 17, no, 18. 99 is 18. So divide that by 2. Gives me 40. Now, let's go look and see, right? So my signs are different. So I'm going to be subtracting these two factor pairs. And it needs to equal 29. So I'm looking for a 29 somewhere here. Is there one that equals 29? Let's check 16, 45. 45 minus 16 equals 29. So I didn't have to keep going. I'm looking, right? And I probably didn't have to start there. My signs are different, and the bigger is going to be negative. So that's negative. That's, sorry, that's positive. That's negative. So I can stop 16 and 45. So we have 48y squared. What was it, 16 and 45? 16, negative 45y minus 15. That looks good. Let's factor by grouping now. Group those. So uh, what goes into 48 and 16? This, I don't think 16 goes into 48. Yes, it does, three times. That's what Mr. Mac doesn't know. So 16y we can factor out. And that gives me 3y plus 1. Now we look at our common factor here. My first term is negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative. I'm going to factor out a negative 15. Because 15 goes into 45 and 15. So that gives me 3y plus 1. They, they are the same, so I know I did it right. Don't forget this negative, this first negative. We get 3y plus 1, and then 16y minus 15. Wow. We just went from prime to that crazy one. All right, that's good. I'm confident that works. 3c squared, cd minus 12d squared. Okay. No common factor. It's in standard form. C, C to the C to the second, C to the first, no C's. And the D squared comes after because this C is going to take precedence of something that doesn't have a C. So that's in standard form. There is no common factor. There's no C amongst them. There's no three goes into all three of them. Five doesn't go in. So common factor is good. It's not a binomial square. It's not a special case because neither is a binomial square. So we're doing A times C again. This is good practice. You better know your stuff inside and out. Here, brother, sister. 3 and negative 12 makes 36. How many times have we seen factors of 36 today? A ton. So we should know our factors of 36. Uh, the signs are different because that's a negative, and the bigger is going to be negative. Negative, 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 positive, 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 positive. Imagine if we come up with prime here. Negative 35, negative 16, negative 9, neg negative 5, and 0. Yes. That's my middle. Thank you. So we get 3c squared plus 4cd. Remember, we're always going to use the variable, the same variable as our middle, minus 9cd. What's wrong with my writing? Minus 9cd minus 12d squared. Factor by grouping. So look at the first term, first two, we're looking for a common factor. There's a C that they have in common. So that's 3C plus 4D. Let's look for a common factor. My first term is negative. So I have to factor out a negative. 3D is the common factor. I look at the coefficients, 9 and 12, and I look at the variables. So 3D, uh, if I take out a 3D, I get 3C. If I take out a negative 3, that's positive 4D. 
Good. And I know I did it right because what's in the parentheses are identical. And we get that as my solution. 3C plus 4D times the quantity C minus 3D. Nice. That's a good one. At noon, two trains leave stations at opposite ends of the line on parallel tracks. So you got this train going this way. You got this train going that way. Sound good? All right, we've got a train. Choo choo. And it's traveling in that direction. And it's opposite ends of the line. So you got another train. Let's make it blue. And that one's going in this direction. All right, one train is traveling at 90 kilometers per hour and the other at 96 kilometers per hour. If the stations are 651 kilometers apart, how long will it be before the trains meet? All right, that's good. So I read it first, I'm understanding uh, the distance between here is 651 kilometers, good, and uh, one's traveling, so we'll say that the rate of speed, oh, let's do that in black so we know, um, so we're going to be using this formula. Um, Let's do this. Distance equals rate times time, and distance equals rate times time. So the rate of speed of this train, this black train, is going to be 90. And we don't know how much time it's going to travel, but it's going to be t, because they're going to start at the same time. So two trains at, at noon, two trains leave, all right? So that's going to be that formula. The rate of speed for the blue train, the blue train is moving at 96, blue train, isn't that like an education service? 96 kilometers per hour. And it's starting at the same time. So when you start your clock, they're going to have the same T. And so their distance, the distance for this train is going to be 90t, and the distance for this train is going to be 96t. So when they meet, so when this little train goes, oh, let's connect its caboose. Let's group. So when this train goes, well, let's use two hands, Mr. Mac. So at noon, they start traveling and they want to know when do they meet. So when they meet is when you stop the clock. So if they start and stop at the same time, that's why their time is going to be the same. Clock starts, they start. When they meet, the clock start, stops. So they both are going to travel at the same time. This one's moving at 90 kilometers per hour. This one's moving at 96 kilometers per hour. So it's moving a wee bit faster. Okay, we can even make that blue for Mr. Max for continuity purposes. So let's think about this. So when they meet, let's make that the meeting point. What is the distance of the black train? Well, the distance of the black train is going to be 90t. That's oh, that's not a huge foot. That's how far it's traveled. 90 kilometers times the amount of time that it's been traveling. What's the distance of the blue train? Well, the blue train has been traveling at 96t. 96 kilometers times the amount of time. So what we need to understand is that the sum of those two distances equals the total distance. Because if you take, if you take this distance, right, the black train, and you take this distance, 
the blue train and you add those two distances up, that should equal 651 kilometers. So what we do here is we take, oh, let's do this, distance of black plus the distance of the blue will equal the total distance. So what's the, what's the distance of the black train? That would be 90T. What's the difference of the uh, what's the distance of the blue train? That would be 96t. What's the total distance? Well, 651 kilometers. So that looks pretty easy. We have like terms. We're going to add those together. We get 186t, not t squared, because we're adding, equals 651 divided by 186. And we get t equals a handy dandy notebook, right? 651 divided by 186 gives me 3.5. So 3.5 what? T, what is my time? Well, let's look at the units here. If we look at the units, we have kilometers would be our measure of distance. We saw that in two places and my unit of time is going to be hours. So I know that that is three and a half hours. Did I do time, oh, I did time in blue. So that's gonna be in hours. You can always find your unit within your problem. Uh, and it says if the stations, how long will it be before the trains meet? The trains will meet in three and a half hours. What time do they meet? There's an interesting question. What time would they meet? What time in the day? What time in the day? Well, if they started at noon, that means 12 p.m. What is three and a half hours? Well, that would be 3.30 p.m. is when they would meet. This is the correct answer, three and a half hours, because it asked how much time, how long will it be before the trains? Well, that's mm -hmm. how long in three and a half hours. But oftentimes in problems, you'll see them ask this question, what time of the day did they meet? So that would be at 3.30 p.m. Very interesting. And the last problem, let's do, express these three terms, x minus one over three, x over four, and one over two with their LCD. So we have to find the common denominator of these three denominators. And then we have to convert to equivalent fractions, which is what I love. So LCM, of 3, 4, and 2, we're going to do the prime factorization. We circle what they have in common. They don't, all three don't have any, anything in common, but they have that in common. So we start with 3, then we go down to 2, and then we circle what they have left over. So my LCM is going to be the 2 that they share, the 2 left over, and the 3 left over, which gives me 12. So my common denominator is going to be 12. Now we have to convert each one into twelfths. So three times what is 12? Well, three times four. So if I multiply the bottom by four, I have to multiply the top by four. And I have to distribute that to both terms. So we get four X minus four over 12 is the equivalency. That would be the equivalent fraction. Then we have x over 4 equals how many twelfths? Well, let's 4 times 3. So we multiply the numerator by 3. That's 3x. And the last problem, we have 1 half. 1 half equals how many twelfths? 2 times 6 times 6. So 6 twelfths would be equivalent. And now if we look at these three fractions, you notice that they all have the same denominator. Once they have the same denominator, we can add and subtract 
anything we want. So express each of those terms with their LCD. So the proper answer is 4x minus 4 over 12, 3x over 12, and 6 over 12. Hope that helps. These are good questions. They're all over the place. Interesting questions. Hopefully you're doing well. And this is a review. It just gives you an understanding of what you retained from the year and what you still need to work on. It's not about grading. It's about let's figure out what you still need to work on. Good job.